Uh, thanks for coming, everybody. Good to see you. Uh, Mary, Peter, thank you. All right. Uh, so this is, who hasn't heard about the Billy Meyer case? <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, this is, this is for people, we've all seen this, so. Okay. Yeah. The title says something that's more likely to happen than not to happen. If we change our ways, then we can make the extremely unpleasant future not as unpleasant. But chances are we're not going to change our ways. So I'm going to present a summary. It actually, it started out as I was going to do like a book, re book report on one of the contacts and edit out the stuff that I thought was not as uh, standing out for me, but it was really hard to do because the more I read it, the more I saw how each section tied in with the next. And it's really hard to just extract stuff from the, the contact itself. But I started to do it. And uh, so we'll, you're going to get an extracted version at the beginning, but then it became overwhelming for me. And I, I ran out of time. And so there's it's going to be what it is. Uh, so we'll start. It's based on contact 710. So it's relatively recent. It's uh, from September 11th, 2018. And Ta starts out by saying what you can read there. What has already been ruined and destroyed cannot be made good again, which is why all efforts must be directed toward doing the best possible in order to avoid further destructive and annihilating machinations, which would aggravate that which is already predestined, which will inevitably happen. There needs to be a drastic reduction of the overpopulation, which is enforced by means of a birth ban lasting sev for several years, and then permanent state-controlled birth control. Uh, yeah. Only in this way can the necessary things be done for the distant descendants of humanity on Earth and a chance be given to them to survive. This is how we start. So Billy uh, goes on to, to say, what he wants to talk about is... Uh, uh, things that he's seen in the future with uh, his travels with Svat. And it can go in two directions. One is the negative and one is in the positive. But what he's going, what he's going to present in the, the following uh, discussion, well, it's more a one-sided discussion, is the negative. So he starts off by saying, if peace and freedom and tranquility are to emerge in humanity, it will be necessary to resort very quickly to means by which all technical, electronic, economic, political, and social developments can no longer continue to develop negatively as they have up until now. And what comes to mind just seeing that, I'm thinking of already the G5 uh, technology that's uh, you know, emerging, which will have a very uh, uh, detrimental and uh, intense effect on, on people's health. Uh, all probably electromagnetic energy fields do, but this is even more intense. Okay, 
And uh, he goes on to say that if peace and freedom and tranquility are to emerge in humanity, then it will be necessary to resort very quickly by means by which all technical, okay, um, okay, sorry. The weapons production and the transfer of weapons to all parts of the world are the most important factors by which no firm and lasting global peace and no effective freedom and democracy can be achieved. And he's also specifically talking about uh, the U.S. and their uh, striving for world domination. So, uh, and the weapons industry as, you know, and this needs, to, you know, the U.S. involving itself in other countries um, needs to be, you know, they have to withdraw basically from other countries and let them uh, uh, solve their own problems without interfering in their internal governmental uh, decisions. So, okay. So, in the future, all natural catastrophes will become more and more violent, such as the increasingly uh, primeval storms of all kinds, earthquakes, uh, sea quakes, tsunamis, and increasing serious floods and droughts. So, oops, I've got to get the right direction going. Here's a, uh, some pictures that I tried to associate with uh, the text, but you can see uh, that looks pretty heavy. Um, uh, it could be Photoshop, but it's hard to know. Anyway, as, you, as the player out and explain, global warming has already increased by 1.2 degrees, and this cannot be reversed in the foreseeable future, because to the contrary, it will continue to increase. Uh, yeah, so there it is. Um, the climate is already so badly damaged that the evils that have arisen will continue to progress and bring ever greater natural disasters which can no longer be countered by human intervention. As a result, everything will get worse and worse and nothing will change for the better. Even if all internal combustion engines and thus cars and machines are taken out of circulation, as well as if fossil fuel burning is banned, the enormous emissions into the atmosphere from other sources, especially shipping, which uses heavy fuel oil for combustion, aircraft, which also emit huge amounts of dirt into the atmosphere, industrial chimneys, etc are all enough to increase the overall level of atmospheric and environmental degradation. I, I just want to say that in reading this, it's a little bit different from the other uh, contact, which was destruction of the environment as a consequence of overpopulation, because in that specific uh, contact, he goes into a lot of detail about uh, statistics and percentages. And, projections in, in that matter. These are more broad strokes of what will happen. Um, and yeah. On a very large scale, there's also the destruction of nature and its uh, fauna and flora through the application of tons of pesticides, fungicides and herbicides which will not only destroy large parts of the planet, plant world and even destroy it to extinction, but also birds, lizards, mammals, and all kinds of small animals and thousands of useful insects. And the fact that the health of the people is also damaged as a result, and that many of them increasingly fall prey to and die of the scourge of cancer and other disease, dangerous diseases, does not concern all those who produced all the toxins, nor all the others, such as farmers and horticultural enterprises, etc., who spread all these toxins into nature. And the fact that these toxins then get into the food and into the atmosphere and waters so that 
then also into the bodies of humans and animals, etc. And in these uh, complaints and diseases and even cause death does not concern those responsible without conscience because they are only interested in their horrendous profit. And the fact is that the origin and the resulting machinations and the effective effects of the whole are based solely on the fact that the overpopulation is overwhelming because its constant and unstoppable growth requires more and more substances, materials and achievements, as well as medicine, food, luxury goods, etc. So more and more things and objects are required as well as furniture, houses, vehicles, ships, airplanes, building machines, which in turn require new roads, tunnels, factories, corporations, etc., and many other things for their project, uh, production, and which were driven to ever higher heights by the continuing, or are driven to ever higher heights by the continuing rise of the overpopulation and is driven up further and still worse. And this is because neither a worldwide ban on birth imposed by a governmental law for several years nor worldwide control birth regulation takes place, whereby in the long run alone all worldwide rampant evils uh, will slowly be, uh, could slowly be brought under control and dissolved if this were the case. Yeah. And then Here's something. Uh, but what wants to be done by the magnet, uh, mag oh, sorry. magnanimity of those climate researchers, environmentalists, green parties, and other environmental protection screamers who only spit big words into the world with confused ideas, useless proposals, regulations, and unrelated assertions that partly correspond to some necessities but not to what has to be done effectively. On the one hand, they are not able to recognize the effect of truth and all the evils and catastrophes that exist worldwide are solely the fault of the long overboard overpopulation with its irresponsible and criminal machinations against nature, its fauna and flora, the atmosphere and the climate. You know, just on that point, Many of the uh, the big uh, climate conferences they they talk about all the various problems that we are facing, but they don't really address the overpopulation problem. And so that's what he's saying here is just it's you know yeah let's you know climate action we need to um, you know uh, stop global warming, but you know or we have to become vegetarians to uh, you know reduce our consumption, you know, our footprint, or whatever the, the cause may be that we, we stand up for that's, you know, for supporting uh, a change and a brighter future, but it's never made, the correlation with overpopulation is not made. It's, so the effect of the real problem is not dealt with, right? So anyway. Uh, so it goes on to say, um, this while on the other hand, they are probably also too stupid or too cowardly to see the real truth or to accept it from those warning people who effectively know the real facts and shout out into the world, as for example, I have done again and again since 1940, the 1940s through predictions and still do today. But this does not want to be recognized or not be brought up for fear of cower fear and cowardice against unpleasant reactions from ignorant groups of the population and especially all public media do not publish such statements and warnings do not mention them do not explain them to mankind on on the earth and therefore conceal them so that states it for what it is the real number doesn't even match what the 
telling Yeah, that's correct. It's the population, according to the Pleiadian statistics, which they do once a year on December 31st, cent, uh, midnight Central European time, was just below 9 billion people as of December 31st, 2018. But now it is over 9 billion. And the UN, I think their estimates are about 7.6 billion. So there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It varies, I think, as well. But they, there's no way that the, the UN or uh, the census uh, can actually do an accurate assessment because there is no way to know who lives in the small villages and who's, how many people are being born per second. There's, it's just an average, it's just an assumption that what they think it is. But because the play out and have something called a, a biogram which is a way of sensing or uh, fine energies and each individual person has a spirit form with a unique frequency and this biogram is able to register each unique uh, spirit form from each human being at a given moment in time so they know exactly what is the population uh, figure at a precise moment in time. But then of course it changes because it's always changing. Right. Uh, next. But there are also other facts to mention which refer to the future because as a result of overpopulation, further evil uh, malicious, criminal and destructive mach uh, machinations arise out of it, like, like acts of terror, acts of war, persecutions, droughts, tremendous storms, famines, racial hatred and religious hatred, as well as diseases and epidemics which are spread all over the world, new streams of uh, refugees will also be coming uh, in, in the coming times, increasing in masses and bringing with them enormous problems such as criminality, outrages and family destruction. The overpopulation of the world today has long since exceeded the ecological viability of its habitat. And this fact is the central problem of the Earth's humanity, which is promoting more and more poverty, hunger, unemployment, and the growth of slums. which today occur mainly in the developing countries and are attributed to the population explosion there and the resulting strong population pressure. But that is not all because the degenerated machinations of overpopulation have also given rise to the devastating environmental problems that destroy the global climate and nature and its flora and fauna, as well as the globally destructive ecological footprint of humanity. And this is also the case with regard to the consumption of oil, natural gas, and natural coal, whereby petroleum, which is refined into motor oils and fuels for internal combustion engines is needed on the one hand for all kinds of machinery and motor vehicles such as cars and motorcycles, many of which are only prestige vehicles and would not be used by users. Their CO2 emissions destroy nature and the climate and flora as well as endangering people's health and making them ill. And if the catastrophic destruction caused by overpopulation and the immense use of fertile land for endless housing, roads, sports fields, amusement parks and production facilities of all kinds is shown, then there's no understanding among the thoughtless, irresponsible, irresponsible and inexorably growing overpopulation mass. So, so that is also one of the problems that we're just spreading out over farmlands and with the urban sprawl and uh, just, it just 
In every direction you look, there are problems. An overfishing of the seas and all other waters worldwide. The enormous worldwide deforestation, deforestation and a very precious uh, consumption of water as well as harmful emissions that destroy and pollute nature. It's fauna and flora and the atmosphere which have been fatal to many people. Flora and fauna and to many life forms for many years are related to the growth of the world population. The loss of the forest, the forests alone is caused among other things by poverty, by so-called land grabbing, which is carried out by international investors who clear huge areas of forest for plantations. So let me just, uh, so harmful pollution. And here's an example, for example, you know, the cutting down of the Am Amazon forest for uh, pasture grazing. Uh, but also for plantations, we have um, such as uh, in Central America, with um, Dole, you know, and the Chiquita. They buy huge areas of land in these, uh, yeah, these plantations. And it, what it does is it actually puts the local people uh, who would be building, you know, small, self-sufficient type of uh, farming for themselves, and they, they get put out of work uh, I mean, actually, it's they, they are employed now, they become dependent on these corporations for, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It says, uh, the loss of the forest alone is caused, among other things, by poverty, by the so-called land grabbing, which is uh, carried out by international investors who clear huge areas of forest for plantations, but where there is also strong population growth in the affected regions. Most of the people in these areas are farmers who operate a subsistence economy, relatively a form of farming that consists of creating a small economic area in which they can live and work. For example, a, a farm produces all the goods it needs for its own consumption itself and is therefore independent of the market. Uh, due to the strong population growth, However, it is no longer possible for them uh, because the, their available arable land is disappearing as a result of deforestation and the soil is being eroded and decays because the deforested land no longer protects it, which is, uh, in the long run means that even greater loss of arable land. Overall, however, the loss of forests also has a considerable impact on the lives of populations in poor countries worldwide because forests no longer protect the soil from flooding and avalanches. Moreover, in poor countries, forests are often used uh, as the most important source of uh, heating and cooking materials uh, because most of their cooking is done with wood. Water scarcity today is already one of the <clears throat> central problems in some parts of the world, which will affect more and more people all over the world in the future. With the number of deaths caused by water scarcity increasing rapidly and strongly and inevitably leading to armed conflicts over water, if according to uh, your play out and data and calculations, the current water availability for terrestrial mankind is considered, then only 67% of the world's population will have sufficient water available today in 2018, while the rest of the world's population, namely 24%, is already suffering from water shortages and even 8% from dangerous water shortages. So that's according to the Pleiadian data.
So this is the actual exact number as of December 31st. So it, as you can see, it's almost 9 billion, right? With regard to the uncontrolled growth of overpopulation, it is politically claimed with lies and deception that births are declining in various countries, which on the one hand, however, corresponds only to a human reassurance lie. And on the other hand, it is the case that in reality, births continue to rise worldwide because more and more women are able to give birth year after year. And of course, they also have offspring into the world. Already today in 2018, the earth is so overpopulated that several earths would be needed to distribute the mass of overpopulation on it and to populate the planets with a reasonable number of human beings so that they do not threaten to collapse one day. But this is precisely what will threaten the earth in the future. For this will be the case if reason does not finally prevail over the whole of mankind or humankind on earth and a ban on births for several years is finally imposed followed by a strict officially controlled birth rate regulation. And of course you have people say, oh, you, you know, overpopulation is not a problem. We can fit everybody onto in Texas or you know, in New Zealand or whatever. And we have lots of room. What are you talking about? But of course, that's, that's ridiculous. That's as bad as people that believe that the earth is flat because nature needs space. Humans need space. Can you imagine everybody just existing? <laughs> it makes no sense. Uh, Yeah. Uh, 29, they say. 529. 520, 529. But it's. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what they, they say that we could probably still, you know, it'd be a major improvement if we were only 1 billion. If we kept that as a stable number, it would still be incredible improvement over what we have now. But, yeah. Ideally, it would be 529 bil uh, million people, not billion, <laughs> that would be <laughs> million, but that would give enough room for everybody to have a, you know, a very healthy, lots of space. Nature would have the, the, flo you know, the flora, the fauna, everything would flourish. It would be uh, recovery. The air would be, yeah, but the, the thing is, it's not only a, a matter of reducing the population through birth control and stoppage of birth, but also the stopping of all crim criminal activity that, uh, that, that is working against nature. So, yeah, it's those two t t together, but most, mostly the machinations of the production is to meet up with the growing demand of uh, requirements of more and more people. Yeah. But then there's also another factor. There's also another factor which we'll, he's going to get into, which has to do with the greed of mankind too. Mm -hmm. So there's the powerful that are, you know, the elites that are taking advantage of this whole thing too, which is further uh, messing up everything. So, okay. So, to curb the population growth in poor developing countries and in the industrialized countries depends uh, not only on political decisions but also on the world population itself. So, it has to be agreed by everybody. We have to support, you know, that's why pr one of the reasons probably among many that the politicians don't want to 
uh, and, you know, bring this up is because they don't want to look bad. You know, they don't want to lose their votes. But if the whole of the population said, you know, this makes sense, we shouldn't have, you know, we have to cut back in our numbers. We can't, we can't have more and more children endlessly. Uh, where's it all leading to? If the, if the mass consciousness was thinking along those lines, then it wouldn't be so politically uh, unattractive for the politicians. In fact, they would start to support this. But it, so it's a combination of both political decisions and the people, general consensus, agreeing that this is what needs to be done. It can't be just the government's imposing it, and it can't be, it has to be working together. Okay, population policy is officially pursued in various countries with the aim of reducing the numbers of birth, births, but this is effective only officially because in reality the whole thing is only extremely lame and meaningless up to not being handled at all. Everything is nothing more than noise and smoke, I don't know, if smoke and mirrors maybe, which enrich certain administrators and state conductors so the whole thing cannot work, especially not in poor countries where in many cases there is sheer poverty and therefore no functioning health system. In particular, women in rural regions are often not reached in developing countries if information is already given about the rampant uh, overpopulation. In many countries in particular where uh, the Catholic circles engage in sectarian suggestive soul catching and have li the lies to tell where uh, and have the lies to tell sorry there are criminals working against all education and birth control in a dirty and rambling way thereby making access to contraception methods and contraceptives at all impossible for the entire population in the case of the Philippines, in particular, this has led to poorer women very often becoming pregnant unintentionally and giving birth to children who they are unable to feed. In 1979, for the first time, a convention of the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women was binding under the Women's Convention on the right to family. However, the extent to which this convention is effective is written in the stars. If we look around the world at how women are treated by the world of men, how their rights are inhumanely curtailed, how countless of them are beaten, thrashed, abused, enslaved, prostituted, or even murdered for their work of equal value to men, then there's nothing effective about eliminating all forms of Everything goes on in the old framework as it has been done for thousands of years by the men's world, contemptuous of women, humiliating women, and autocratic, domineering, and exploiting women. But whether it will be possible to slow down the population the industrialized countries and in the poorer developing countries through understanding, reason, and a sense of responsibility depends on the one hand on the individual human beings of the entire earthly human race and on the other hand on international political decisions, decrees, and ordinances. If this, uh, if this was to happen, one of the key points would be a qualitative and quantitative improvement in reproductive health care. So better health care and more of it. With the associated decisive clarification of birth regulation, including family planning, and as Billy said, as I have said again, the empowerment of women, in other words, the strengthening of their legal, family, and economic and social position.
However, as a rule, at all, nothing happens to teach humanity on the earth through clarifications about an urgency necessary and a worldwide birth stop. As a result, there's also no worldwide education regarding the extremely urgent necessity of a birth control carried out officially and personally by every woman, as a result of which the overpopulation remains unnoticed despite the urgency of what is absolutely necessary, as a result of which people in general also fall into ever increasing, an ever-increasing state of evil. It just goes on, you know, Calamities, poverty, lack of possessions, lack of money, suffering, psychological torment, torture, misfortune. It just he goes into the whole thing about it. On the one hand, the misery of man or humankind increases faster as the population increases. On the other hand, the prosperity level of the upper elites rises on average as a result of ever higher wages and profit sharing at the expense of the common people. Uh, so the elites who as employee or the, uh, the common people who as employees dependent on capitalism have no means of production of their own and therefore completely dependent on the capital rich elite. In principle it would have to be assumed that the ever faster growing world population generally requires greater economic profitability and efficiency but this is precisely what is counteracted by the greed for money of the upper elites because in their greed for uh, for profit and avarice they accumulate ever larger fortunes because instead of maintaining expanding and increasing economic profitability and its efficiency, it is increasingly being reduced despite the growing demand as a result of the increasing overpopulation. And this depletion or reduction, which only serves the profit and wealth of the upper elite of each faction, makes the dependent employees unemployed, impoverishes them, and pleasure plunges them into misery. And one of the most important ways and methods practiced by the upper elites, who greedily hoard and increase their wealth to the immeasurable, is to move their production plants to low-cost countries with or without official authorization, thereby putting their established workers on the street and making them breadless. Another way is uh, through automation. So that's <laughs> the other thing to do is when you go shopping at a, a superstore, instead of doing the self-serve, we should be doing the, uh, the cashiers, keeping them employed. Because you see, it's those, the corporations are trying to streamline everything so that their costs are kept down. They don't have to employ people or they employ less people. Same with the banking machines. See, if we went to the banks and we dealt with the tellers, it's you know, but the banks want to make money and so they, they want to do it all automated, right? So this is what this is about here. So another way and method is to automate the production processes in such a way that the workforces and companies, firms, corporations are reduced by hundreds or thousands respectively and dismissed uh, and consequently uh, put into, you know, uh, unemployment where, however, there are no factories, but pure processing operations where only jobs are carried out, such as uh, the post office, banks, telephone, all sorts of other similar operations in their branches. Uh, so the, these public services are being uh, cut back as well, right? Uh, okay. So there's another factor here, which is... Um, talking about globalization and um, will be spread to all countries and spread uh, many times over even into the industrialized okay so disease and hunger and 
you know, social unrest, all of this stuff is all tied in with globalization. Um, and it goes on to talk about, um, while on the other hand, diseases and epidemics will continue to spread also as a result of climate change and will appear in countries which, uh, because of their cooler climates, have been spared by it until now. In particular, future diseases and deadly epidemics from the southern hemisphere, uh, such as Africa and South America in particular, will break through the borders of their southern regions, invade the northern hemisphere, and bring fatal disaster to people. So that's another factor to consider. This will also increase impoverishment and social unrest and the enormous increase in the mass of overpopulation will also play its part in this for because there is no long standing birth stoppage and no prevention, uh, preventative uh, limitation of the birth rate because it is not enforced there will inevitably be no limitation of the exploitation of the Earth's resources and the Earth will be robbed, exploited, and destroyed until it collapses. The digital network is also becoming more and more a huge problem for man, uh, humankind. Because through its direct use, the Earth's population is becoming more and more socially impoverished and loses its ability to contact and connect with its fellow human beings. As a result, the already existing interpersonal indifference is becoming more and more blatant and widespread and is no longer allowing any compassion to arise for one's neighbor. But through the digital network and its direct use, humans also become impoverished in terms of their education and the use of all their cognitive abilities because nothing more needs to be thought about. But only smartphones need to be clicked on for all and every knowledge. And specialist software is used to find out in words and pictures in simplistic form. Uh, yeah. It no longer has to be laboriously learned and studied by oneself because all desirable knowledge is stored in the dig digital networks and can be retrieved at will at any time without having to think about it, without having to learn or otherwise cognitively process and, uh, the retrieved uh, information let alone store it in one's memory, and thus cognitive stupefaction through the use of the digital network is inevitable. The digital network can also be used to find like-minded people who can exchange their interests with one another, but who are increasingly able to coordinate and organize deviant, pedophile, criminal, delinquent, subversive, and terrorist machinations. Through the development of so-called biological weapons, a dangerous bioterrorism develops, whereby, as Fat already said, aggressive artificial super viruses become released in this way to exterminate masses of people and even whole peoples. So these are more the negative possibilities that will happen. It must be uh, also said that the climate change and global warming which already exists and cannot be stopped in the future will in some places lead to heat that will reach lethal levels. Okay. Just, just one thing leads into the next. In terms of terror throughout the world, it is not the actual criminal terrorist organizations that are at the forefront but the USA, which in its hegemonic delusion of world domination, will never miss a single US terrorist act to satisfy its world domination craving, as it has always done, but which will one day come to a bad end. So I have to remind you that this is what Billy is saying. But what has stopped 
uh, what has happened so far since the end of the Third World War in terms of evil. So it's referring to our Second World War, but according to Billy, that's our Third World War because the First World War was what? The War of 1812 or something? Huh? 17. Seven year war between England and France. Thank you, Sidonia. Yeah, and, uh, and then it was, that was considered the First World War, and then there's the, our, the Second World War, which is our First World War, and then the Second World War, which is, according to Billy, the Third World War. So, uh, so he's saying, but what has happened so far since the end of the Third World War in terms of evil catastrophes and degeneration through uh, human-made and natural catastrophes, etc., was the beginning of all the horrors yet to come. But there is also the EU dictatorship, which will uh, disintegrate more quickly than anyone can uh, dream of, as it will also happen in the future that, all, uh, that nations will seat themselves seal themselves off and that ultimately new wars will break out between states that are still friends today if the political model is continued in the way that it has always been the case and continues to be the case today. If understanding and reason do not finally emerge, then the whole thing is inevitable, as it will be if the U.S. America does not finally give up its world greedy hegemony and if it is not put in its place by all states of the uh, countries of the earth in time and if a real worldwide peace does not come about in time. If all this does not happen then bombs will once again fall on Germany and soldiers from France Greece and other countries will again invade Germany and fight, murder, rape, plunder in the uh, destroyed cities. And if this happens, then it will be that after all the refugees from Arabia who are seeking refuge and protection in Germany today, everything will change in such a way that from then on many Germans will flee as persecuted war refugees to the Arab countries and seek protection and reception there where they will have great problems due to their lack of cultural adaptability. In large parts of Europe the sky will then darken and the uh, land areas will become devastated landscapes. All buildings and houses will be destroyed and plundered and then also hardly any food will be found. And it goes on. In the future, it may be that in the way of naming and using of a valid credit card number or by prepayment, the transportation and the treatment of the sick as well as police investigations will be carried out only by advance payment. <laughs> so everything will have to be paid in advance. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, in the future, however, there will be many other things that the whole of humankind on earth will have to think about in depth. For there will be far-reaching computerization, electronic electronization, I don't know if that's even a word, and their far-reaching networking which will drive terrestrial a humankind to the edge of its existence if the cybernetic mania of humankind is not stopped, which is out to develop electronic machines with an artificial form of consciousness and intelligence that ultimately supercomputers and electronic cyber beings will gain power over humankind. Again and again I have to explain that the future will bring dr extremely dramatic events for earthly humankind. The planet, its nature, 
fauna and flora, forever more violent and devastating hurricanes and typhoons will occur, as well as violent droughts, primeval storms and rain forces with immense floods, destruction and deaths. And all these phenomena of nature are becoming more and more frequent and stronger, which is a consequence of the climate change, which is man-made or humankind made, and where all other evils, which are also caused by the irresponsible overpo overpopulation, are being driven further and further, and which are aimed at the destruction and annihilation of nature, its fauna and flora, and the whole planet. I'm leaving a lot of stuff out. <laughs> I just, it is a summary. Uh, there is a, here it is. There'll be more and more crisis in the economy, in the financial world, and in the entire social sector. And larger crises will emerge, some of which can no longer be overcome. Global migration, will also increase to such an extent that no way can be found of coping with it and a devastating problem will result which will appear to be a kind of epidemic affecting all countries of unassailable proportions. All the longer, all the more, it will become more and more urgent not to simply wait blindly for great threats and to let everything be decided by politics which always only plays on short-sightedness because it has long since become necessary for every single human being on the earth to implement themselves in relation to a long-term risk assessment and to do and undertake everything themselves from this what is right, best, good, and life-supporting for humankind, nature, its fauna and flora, and the planet earth itself. It has already become inevitable. Hello. It has already become inevitable that social inequality will bring much misery and need, but it will increase dramatically and drastically in the coming times. It is already the case today that around 130 of the richest Earth human beings of the high elite possesses as much wealth as the entire world population together ha has in, it, in its own asset. In conclusion, I want to say that the most people always want to know everything and also want to know and understand better. But in truth, they have neither knowledge and therefore know nothing, nor do they know the real reality and its truth. As a result, they have no understanding of all the worldwide disasters caused by the machinations of overpopulation and thus man-made catastrophes, human-made catastrophes, which is why the fact is that they do not even understand the future catastrophe in which they themselves are working and helping to build up the, the disaster when it arrives which no human on the earth will survive or only very few will survive. And then Ta says, what you are presenting is actually more than you should say because your efforts in this regard will probably not bring much in the way that your words would be listened to as this has been, proving, been proven since the 1940s when you warned humankind on earth with predictions that have been fulfilled for some time and will continue to do so. Say, I know that, but it's still my duty to talk and warn. And there is a great deal to be said about this, including the dirty machinations of the USA and the EU dictatorship, which are using every imaginable infamous means to try to damage Russia and create a vicious 
image of the enemy against it, which is against peace and freedom. This, while the effective fact is that the West, i.e. the EU dictatorship, but especially the USA, are the forces that prevent peace and freedom throughout the world and are continuing the Cold War, which is still smoldering and has not yet been overcome because the USA, as well as the EU dictatorship as a vassal of the USA, is continuing to maintain it throughout the world and is misleading earthly humanity. The image of the enemy is intended to draw the whole world to the side of the USA through lies and slander and to make Russia the enemy of freedom and peace, with the West in many ways using the power of religion for this purpose. This would have to be removed anyway, because also they only bring violence, discord, and bondage, bondage and prevent human beings from their own thinking. Consequently, they, as always, are not capable, and also in today's time, and also tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, will not be able to recognize the effective real truth and to form their own opinions to decide for themselves and to act independently. This is also the reason why many people are only puppets of those who dominate them and suggestively hammer into them what they think, believe, hold as their opinion and what they should do. Therefore, most people are also trapped. <laughs> Most people are, all, are, are uh, mostly are also trapped in their incapability that they cannot make anything of themselves and therefore have no real success in life, following that they always see themselves as victims and therefore aggressively rebel against any effective and real truth that is explained to them regarding their wrong thinking and behavior. Therefore, everything is constantly getting worse for them because their false thoughts and feelings build up and lived by the misleading religions within them make them brainless believers without initiative with regard to a free, peaceful, and open, independent use of their own thoughts, feelings, and reflections to form their own personal opinions. This is unfortunately not possible for a believing person because the fear of the threatening penalty of God always sits uh, by their neck, which prevents them from developing independent thoughts and feelings. Uh, so, um, so they cannot, out of fear of an imaginary God that ne has never existed, uh, neither in the past nor in the future, uh, re they cannot recognize the effect of real reality and its truth, and that not an imaginary de deity, but only themselves, uh, only the human being themselves in their very, is their very own Lord and Master over themselves, their thoughts, feelings, opinions, decisions, their experiences, as well as their responsibility and their actions. And Toss says, well, what you say belongs to the ears of the faithful. And uh, that's pretty much learned to think independently, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. So, it's, it's unbelievable. And, and it's, that's just a, off the top of his, you know, he, he's, he's having a contact and he just goes on. And it's just like, and it's even more than that. Uh, 710. So it's uh, just a, a, under a year old. Yeah, it's less than a year old. It's amazing that he continues to uh, to put out this information, uh, regardless, you know, of the. You know, it, it seems almost like it's impossible that anything can change for the better, but he's still putting out this information to try to get people to think about it. But he.
influenced by the media. And uh, although I talk to a lot of people, they are aware of all these problems and what is going to happen. Um, they also worry that, uh, oh, the next uh, atomic war would uh, eliminate most of the population of the Earth. And it might happen that way. We don't know. Yeah. He doesn't go into specifics about what's going to happen. But, you know, there are many things looming on the horizon. There, you know, there's that possibility. There's also, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with Apophis. If Apophis actually hits the earth in uh, 29, uh, 2036, 20, yeah, 2029 or 2036, it, you know, if, it's, if it hits, that could be catastrophic. That, you know, uh, you think if that hits, that's going to cause so many things, it could trigger, uh, you know, the volcan underground volcano underneath Italy uh, to just, you know, bam, that goes off. It could cause, uh, it could cause Las Palmas to, uh, to break off because the volcanic, it's all connected, it's all chain reaction. It could, everything could hit, the shit could hit the fan, like, bang, you know. But we don't know, yeah. You're right. I mean, it's it's there, but it's it's not spoken about as often as, let's say, uh, you know, uh, desertification or climate, global warming. You know, all of these these uh, consequences of the overpopulation are spoken about, but not overpopulation. It's it's uh, still a taboo subject. Yeah, I mean, some people talk about it, but not a lot. Exactly right. It has to be a it has to be a consensus of the population. A groundswell, as you say, more and more people find out about it, support the idea. It becomes uh, you know the only logical solution, whereby the government then you know enforces the will of the people if they're not uh, just out there for themselves and their own popularity, as it is now. They're just. You know, they don't want to do anything that will uh, upset their own uh, place in power, so they don't want to talk about overpopulation because it's, it would put them, uh, you know, at risk of, you know, right? So it has to be a one by one by one by one process, as you said. that they got that number from 
believe because they mentioned 500 million people is the limit of a human population on the earth. And there's a good uh, majority. That's the only place. That's the only place. I remember coming across that many times, and usually it's from the um, fear mongering uh, of people for survivalists. Mm -hmm. And they all think that it has to do with the extermination of people, these yeah. camps that are being set up by FEMA. And right. rather than actually seeing it as a right. uh, way yes. of being able to in, uh, educate people to say, this directly applies to everybody that you need to have this many people on the planet for it to properly, healthily survive. And if it's overpopulated, then you need to be able to combat that problem, such as been recommended by a cessation of births. Also for people to, like the women in Africa who are not being educated, a lot of them don't want kids because they realize the burden that it creates, not only on themselves, but their own country. So education is a big thing. And as Catherine has brought up with people now starting their own groups, obviously it's individuals now where something has affected them directly. That's the only time we act. It's if somebody doesn't just wake up one day and I think, oh, hey, overpopulation, I think I'm going to tackle that and get the voice out there. Something in their life must have affected that. Michael bringing this kind of word out. Look, one person might walk through the door and it might strike them and they walk out and they start doing something about it. So it's, um, it, it has to be tackled, you know, one step at a time. And, only when that is something that touches them directly that they're going to act on. The media is not going to. But it's always from the ground up. Yeah, but let's just say that... Unless there's money in it. Pardon? Unless there's money in it, then they will. Yeah. And yeah, but, but, but as you said, that there's a lot of people that think uh, the elite is trying to cope with this problem in their own way, to mm -hmm. eliminate uh, the, the majority of people through <coughs> vaccination, yeah. through whatever, through glyphosate. I mean, uh, in, in the... In the National Post, uh, they, they're writing an article about we're, in, we're ingesting more and more plastic, plastic particles. Okay, so this kind of thing uh, only contributes to cancer. Okay, more, more people will be dying with that. And, and a lot of people are believing that the so-called elite is trying to cope with this problem on their own in different ways. Yeah, I'm hearing about Monsanto, that the Roundup, supposed to kill the weeds, right, yeah. that, that's getting into the food and it's in the, in, in the human intestines, you know. Uh, that, round huh? that round does that. That round does that. That round does that. A couple of weeks ago I heard you know, it's either the World Health Organization or the United Nations said that these superbugs, the West, you know, Western medicine doesn't, you know, there's nothing more they're resistant to oh, yeah. uh, antibacterial, antivirus, mm -hmm. and antibiotics, and antibiotics, antibiotics and whatever, right? They, and they predict that millions will die because there's nothing to give. I'm coming up in per, my per, again. You mentioned anything personal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I. They've given me antibiotics and they're not working anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they, now I've got. I had a Western doctor tell me to go to a health store, right? and get a certain product mm. that stops the bacteria from attaching to the insides. Right? Actually, for most people, uh, what it will be is to have uh, good health and a strong immune system. Actually, um, in most cases, the placebo effect is what uh, has people surpass any kind of disease or any kind of health issues, which means that you're actually your own body's immune system. That's what it's it's not just Vitamins and minerals no, no. and uh, medication no, and it's, it's, your it's, it's your own immune system. It's the repair shop. Yeah. Because with the with the with the Black Death in Europe, there was nothing, you know, and yet that disappeared. People became resistant. What they found is the people that were that were resistant to the Black Death, they are resistant to AIDS and HIV. It's come come through the genes or whatever. Well, uh, it's hard to know. But it's a conversation, and by uh, Billy putting this out, and me taking the time to read this thing, because it's such an intense 
uh, contact and Peter filming it, it's a possibility that it will reach more people. Uh, just from, you know, it's one thing to read it just quickly, you know, but it's another thing to actually kind of have it sink in. Uh, it takes people like you to make that connection to say, just going out and say overpopulation is the problem or the cause of all the misery in the world. People aren't educated enough to see how it actually affects or yeah, of that. So. so when you bring these facts, okay, so there's, there's facts. consumption, there's pollution, there's deforestation. Once you start showing them, this is what is the result of a family of 12. And give them some math. Hey, 12 go out and make how many if they each have two kids? Yeah, no and they each have two kids. What happened to, you have one, one child, happy-go-lucky, maybe a dog. Okay, I know the, again, they even mentioned about, there's about 80% of the food that we feed our animals is, uh, we are able to feed humans. Mm -hmm. But we rather have four or five dogs and feed them so you have countries that have no food because we're taking it away from them. Yeah, and then we don't, we don't want to eat the dog. Three <laughs> <laughs> four times to not do that. <laughs> I'll be not let my grandfather do the story. <laughs> so you didn't like him yeah. because my grandfather had his dog for you. Yeah, there was just a yeah. really interesting yeah. program yeah. on, uh, I think it's 325 History Channel, and it was on food waste. Mm -hmm. Internationally, yeah. I studied, yeah. and I think Anthony Bourdain, was the uh, narrator of the general program. But like for instance, Japan is against a lot of throw food at them. Mm. Restaurants collect it. Also, farmers can't throw food because it's unesthetic looking and they're feeding pigs. But people eat the pigs. At least it's going into a system. Right. Right? Yeah. So you, you have those aspects. Right. Uh, on the thing about a world population, there's been programs where you have, I think it's TED Talks. And they had somebody on who was supposed to be, I guess, a scientist or somebody who studied overpopulation. They said, well, the population is increasing a little, but it's really going to go down quite quickly because the so-called educated world, is, or sophisticated worlds, are not industrial worlds, are not having children anymore. It's really dropping quite a bit. Uh, oh, so no kidding. Lot. My partner was just like, oh, totally on that. See this overpopulation, she can talk to the poor. Like, Really? <laughs> <laughs> and I've I'm seen a few of them now that have talked about yeah. this kind of thing. Yeah. And it sounds all great, and they're well educated academically, and they come yeah. across like they've really done the math. Yeah. Not even close. Yeah, because they're, they're only looking at their own immediate uh, little bubble. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But they're not looking at the actual global uh, perspective. Yes. No, the refugees yeah. piling in. And, uh, yeah, and again, it sounds convincing. Yeah. And a lot of people in the so-called sophisticated world want to watch these programs because it's on History Channel. Must be truth. So they just swallow it up. Yeah. Great watching. Yeah. Yeah. Sad. Yeah. 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 People yeah. have to start using their common sense. Yeah. If they have kids, they have to dedicate time. They have to dedicate money. They have to dedicate so much for like 20 years. Yeah. And you know, it's too expensive. And people decide, you know, it's not a thing anymore. Well, yeah. this this is the way the. Uh, the problem of overpopulation had been solved in the Western world because women started to have their own careers. Mm -hmm. they, didn't, they, 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 they were just complaining about the low birth rate in, in Europe. Italy, England, Germany, the, the Scandinavian countries. So that, yeah. that, that uh, the greater affluence would have contributed yeah. to that. And education. Yeah. Yeah. And resources for birth control and uh, just awareness. But uh, from a from an overall perspective, it's from a global perspective, it's then you have the wars, which is causing the mass migrations and and they still you know heavily religiously influenced, having more and more kids, bringing that to the, uh, you know, it's a mixing of cultures and uh, a lack of education. And uh, so, you, you know, from an overall perspective, Billy says that the population is growing by about 100 billion, uh, 100 billion per year. Hundred billion per year average, maybe a little bit more. I, I just printed out a, 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 a page from the Swiss 
they call it uh, Zeit Zeichen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Christian Frainer. Yeah. And, and this is the latest. Yeah. And, and he is talking about the, the problem in Africa, the, the immigration to Europe. Yeah. But the cell phone is now a major instrument of uh, making the African people, especially younger people, those that would be considered the middle class, uh, aware of uh, how wonderful Europe is. And, and, and they see all the advertisements, and they, they are, he's saying that 50% of these people are hoping to move to Europe. Move to Europe. He, he said, well, in the United States, they have a problem because of the Atlantic between, but, but here in Europe, uh -huh. and, and he's talking about the increase in their population in, by 2050. Uh, a billion, over a billion, so that the yeah. even surpassed China and India. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but he was talking about uh, he is have a conversation with a fellow from Gabon, from Central Gabon. Africa, Gabon. and uh, he is saying, well, it also is bad for Africa because yes. young people that should be staying and building up. Yeah. Uh, but then they have this uh, this tribal system where the the old people are governing and they say, well, the young ones, uh, their only job is to produce produce children and wait until they're old enough to to determine what has to be done. So they, they're, they're moving from the country, they're moving to the cities, mm -hmm. And uh, from there, they're trying to migrate to Europe. Uh, where they can live an easy life, they think. Yeah. They yeah. Can yeah. Yeah. live off a social system. <laughs> or Although yes. there's, there's, there's poverty in Europe. There's, there's poverty in Europe. I mean, you look at oh, yeah. cities like Rome, they're living in the streets now. Yes, they have come there, and there's no, no work for them. Yeah. yeah. And the, so the crime goes up, and the yeah, the and the pollution city. goes up. And you, you, you saw the pictures in Los Angeles, people living oh, in the yeah. streets, yeah. Yeah. in San Francisco and yeah. Seattle. Mm -hmm. LA. So more of a they're all living in the streets there. Yeah. Yeah. And, the pollution, and they have a rat infestation. Yeah. Oh, oh, a disease is too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of the world has a rat infestation. Yeah, maybe oh, the, yeah. the Black Plague is going to happen again. Yeah, yeah. that is coming. Yeah. Because there are, um, I saw a documentary where there are. I think it's just a couple of guys that go around um, because in the rat population in Vancouver, from the old days when the boats arrived, mm -hmm. there is still the bubonic plague. Yeah. I think one took, there was a took, people, yeah. people that were camping, yeah. somebody got bitten and they had bubonic plague. Mm -hmm. Rat death. And they wouldn't be camping in downtown Vancouver. Yeah. They'd be up in. Up in the up somewhere, yeah. up somewhere yeah. 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 So the rats they're spreading. Yeah, yeah. Where? Vancouver. In Vancouver. Vancouver. Yeah, somewhere. I couldn't well, believe it. I know in, in London when they if somebody, you know, commits tries to commit suicide and they jump into the River Thames, when they pull them out they test them for because it's still in the River Thames in London. Because of all the death, the black death and all the burials and whatever. Mm -hmm. right. And they're digging up they're, they're building subways or whatever in London, right. and they're digging up the old graves, and all the bubonic is still in there. Wow. The Black Death is still wow. in there. Oh, this is so sad. <laughs> can survive, eh? Yeah. I mean, you can, you're saying when they dig up those yeah. bodies, they have to put protective gear because they could get infected? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's possible. 